Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at the V300 remote communications interface. As you saw before we get started, you're going to want to make note of the uh, communication settings on the Perger itself, as well as what COM port your PC is using to communicate via that serial channel. You're also going to want to have two uh, files available. One is the V300 Perger Bulletin. That's just going to serve as a reference in case you uh, encounter any issues in this process. Please refer to that bulletin. And the file is the executable for the GUI that we provide. It's called RS-485 V300 Perger Interface. That is available from our website, and we'll have a link to that towards the end. So once you have your Perger communication settings and your computer's COM port noted, and these two files available, you go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is click on the executable, go ahead and run it. That's going to pop open the main interface screen, and this kind of emulates what you're going to see on the front panel of the Perger itself. So the first thing we're going to want to do is jump right into those COM port settings. You want to select the COM port that your PC is using. In my case, it's COM16. Yours will be different. And then from the Perger, you're going to want to put down the uh, baud rate as well as the parity. Once you have those three points set, you can click test. If it comes up unit found, you're in luck. That means it's able to establish communications. If it uh, times out after a while, that means there's an issue with either your COM port, the baud rate, or that parity, and you'll have to uh, troubleshoot accordingly. Once you have those select, selected and the unit is found, you go ahead and click apply, and then that's, uh, that's it. That's all you have for your COM port settings. Next, we'll go down here and click on Connect. This will take a moment. It's going to pull down the current status of the Perger via that RS-485 channel. And this will be kind of a, a live screen. It'll, it mimics exactly what you would see if you're looking at the front panel of the Perger itself. Just a, a brief overview. You have your current date, time, and your status. You have what the active point is and that purge time or the, it's the cycle time, it's how long it's looking for here. It's a 20 minute countdown. You have your current temperature and pressure. And this is a, uh, a unit that's on my desktop. It's not actually connected to anything. Um, so the you know temperature and that pressure may not mean anything in this case, but if it's a live perger, it will. Then you have, based on that temperature, you'll have a target vent pressure and a target reset pressure. So in this case, it would begin venting when the internal pressure would reach uh, 107 PSI. And it would cease purging once it reaches uh, 86 here, 86 PSI. You have your cycle history, what point you're on, total number of events, and that total vent time, as well as, well as what mode you're in. These two indicators uh, are for the current status of your solenoids. So here it's saying our liquid feed solenoid is on, since this purger on my desk isn't connected to anything, the sensor is saying there is no, uh, no ammonia, no liquid ammonia in our heat exchanger, so it's trying to feed. So that's just going to remain active. Again, it's a, a tabletop um, demo. If you would have a vent, then this solenoid here, um, your vent and your wa water solenoid, both of those would engage and it would purge from the system. So that's just a quick overview of this main screen. Again, this is what you would see if you look at the purger itself, very, very similar. Now at the bottom here, if you were in manual mode, you have your initiate button as well as your terminate button. Now we're not gonna use those since we're in automatic mode. And this is just a demo. So that's a quick overview of the main screen. The real benefit of this remote communications interface is going to be in the system setting. So if we go down here to purger settings, it'll open up our screen. You can see your processing bar, it's pulling all this data over via the RS-485 channel. A nice thing about setting up a purger via the remote communications interface is all that setup is done just on one screen. Um, for those of you who have used the purger itself, you have a uh, six button keypad that you use to toggle through many different menus to go through setting this up. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward using the purger. It's even more simple 
and more straightforward using this remote communications interface. All one screen, everything's called out, very easy to, to go through. So let's take that walk. The first thing you're gonna set up is your time format, AM, PM, or 24 hour military time, depending on your, uh, your preference. You have your date format, again, just preference what you guys wanna use in the US, AM, PM, and your month, day, year are the standard formats. The baud rate and the parity. These are two things you're gonna uh, not want to adjust via this remote communications interface, or you leave them for the end if you're gonna hand over communications to a SCADA system or maybe a PLC. If you change them in the middle of this parameterization, you'll have to go through and uh, reconnect to the purger. Finally, on the kind of main setup side, you'll have your language. Uh, we're gonna leave it as English. You do have options, French, Spanish, Portuguese, German, and Chinese. Um, it will change the purger, what's displayed on the purger panel, as well as what's displayed via the remote communications interface. So here I'll pick Spanish just so I don't get too lost, but you can see it changes everything to Espanol. Change it back to English. And then we'll take a quick walk through the actual setup of the uh, purge points and your purge mode. So here you can see you have access to four purge points. Via this uh, field, you can adjust the number of purge points and it'll either gray those out or make those available. So you're not gonna be able to adjust things that have no you know, relevance in your application. So that's your number of purge points. Next, you have your purge point initial time. It's uh, defaulted to 20 minutes. You can adjust that as needed for your application. And you go through and you can do that for up to the uh, 20 points if you have a 20 point purger. Um, for our case, we're just gonna take it back down to one, keep everything simple, change this back to the default of 20. So next we have our purge mode. You can perform that selection here. Um, the main reason you would buy a rapid purger is to leave it in this auto mode, which is going to use a proprietary algorithm to determine when it should purge. Um, you can also set that up to a manual mode, which is a time-based purge, uh, where you would actually kick off each point individually, or a time-based mode where it's just going to look at uh, second it based on the times you have selected. So the auto mode is more of an intelligent one. It's only going to purge when it has to, and it's going to decrease that cycle time if there are no non-condensables found. So it's a more efficient range of operation if you leave it in the automatic mode. That's kind of a quick overview of that purge point setup. Some other things you can adjust, the, uh, the backlight and the contrast for the display. It's not gonna actually be reflected here in our remote communications interface, but if you did adjust those, it would make that uh, display on the purger itself maybe a little bit more easier to read depending on your uh, ambient conditions. And you have your temperature and pressure calibration uh, you know, these you probably do not want to mess with. If there is an issue with the purger in terms of troubleshooting, you can uh, review those. But for basic operation, the purger does come pre-calibrated. There should be no reason for you to adjust these. Um, units and at the top here, you have metric and English. And then if you were to select that time-based mode, you can select when you want the um, unit to start purging when you want it to stop purging. So this is only going to operate for a certain period of time. And then you have the current date and time for the device. This is fairly important for your history, which we'll take a look at next. But what's nice is you can set that date and time to the PC time. So most people have their computers connected to some wireless network. It automatically keeps your date and time up to date. So if you just click that button, you don't have to go through it and type in all this information. You just click that button and away you'll go. So once you have all your parameters set, you just click apply. It's going to go ahead and download those parameters to the purger and you should be off and running. Next, we're going to take a quick look at the history. So one of the nice things about the purger is it does store up to 12 weeks of purge point history. 
that purge point history is useful for a variety of reasons. Number one is the uh, just the current state of your system. If you see a certain section, a certain purge point more active than the rest, it could give you an idea uh, that there may be a leak. There's a path for you know air to enter that part of the system. You can identify it for your, your PM walks and, and see if you can identify, isolate, and correct that issue. Another reason is just to take a look at the amount of ammonia that's uh, lost. So the V300 does calculate the amount of ammonia that's that's purged. So for compliance issues, you can go ahead and see um, you know, what's going on in your system. That's just a quick look at the current week and which purge point we're on. So you can go through and actually check that. We only have one purge point set up, but you can check this history for each individual purge point. It gives you a very good idea of what's going on. If you click on one weeks, this will tell you for the individual points how many events have occurred, that total time, and the total ammonia loss. So this is kind of a weekly look as you cycle through these at what's going on in your system. So, so again, it'll tell you point by point what's happening. And finally, you have your weekly totals. This will take a minute to download since it's looking for a full 12 weeks of, uh, of history. So we're probably going to go ahead and, and fast forward a bit here in the video. And there you have it. Again, this is um, a, a tabletop demo. It's actually just a controller I have. And this tells you, based on your, your weeks, how many events have occurred, total event time, and a total ammonia lost. So very good overview of what's going on in your system, all available via that remote communications interface. So once we go back to this main screen here, I'll wrap things up with just a, a quick note. This remote comms interface is uh, is a free tool that we provide. However, instead of just using a PC and tying in to the purger, you can set this up to work with any you know PLC, PAC, SCADA system. So if you have a RS-485 or Modbus channel available, you can set up all this information to work with that system. So instead of using your PC, you can use your industrial uh, system to operate the purger. Useful for pulling information, taking a look. You can set your, uh, your limits, flags, communication, whatever you want to do, and uh, you know view what's going on with your purger really from, from anywhere in the world. You tie this purger into your SCADA system, you can have access to this information wherever you are. So that wraps things up here. Again, for more information, please consult your product bulletin. And if you have any questions, please uh, give us a call. Please visit us online. Uh, we'll have a couple links here at the end, as well as uh, below in the YouTube channel for you to get some more information. And I thank you for your time.